dear listeners, and welcome back to another enlightening episode of the Zarlaquan Podcast. I'm your host, Brittany Starr, and today we're diving into a topic that touches the hearts of many, the art of building meaningful tribes, especially during life's transformative moments. Our first guest is a remarkable woman who has dedicated her work to helping others navigate one of these significant transitions. She's an accomplished author, motivational speaker, and a guiding light for women facing the prospect of an empty nest. Brenda Ridgely, the author of the compelling book, Lady and the Tribe, joins us to share her insights and expertise on creating and nurturing tribes so we don't find ourselves alone when our nests start to empty. Brenda's own journey and experiences have not only shaped her perspective, but also inspired her to empower women to cultivate supportive, resilient communities during transformative phases of life. The lady, in The Lady and the Tribe, Brenda explores the importance of building connections, fostering friendships, and finding purpose beyond the role of being a parent. In this episode, what? we'll explore Brenda's journey, the inspiration behind her book, and the invaluable lessons she's learned about the power of community and sisterhood. So grab a cup of tea, settle in, and get ready to be inspired by Brenda Ridgely's insights on building tribes and embracing the exciting opportunities that life trans- transitions bring. Without further ado, let's warmly welcome Brenda Ridgely to the Zarlaquan Podcast. Brenda, thank you for being with us today. Oh, Brittany, great. How are you? I am doing well. I was looking forward to having this meeting today. I am also. Thank you so much for this opportunity. This was really, I love what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for joining my podcast. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and what inspired you to become an indie author? Yeah, absolutely, um, Brittany. I, gosh, I guess I'd like to call myself a recovering momager at this point in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I spent the last 20 years uh, in, you know, several careers, you know, mm-hmm. throughout this journey. And, uh, but when I became a mother um, about 24 years ago, almost exactly, mm-hmm. um, you know, people tell you your life's going to change when you have kids, but there, nothing can prepare you really for what that really looks like for you. And I think everybody has a different but similar journey. And at that point in time, I um, kind of began to sideline a lot of the stuff that was you know Brenda me focused Mm -hmm. my me stuff and um, as we women do I think throughout our lives we kind of go all in to our roles whatever that may be anything that we're given or take on we just go for it and give all of ourselves to that Mm -hmm. and you know I proceeded to do that over 20 years and um you know, I continued to work and, I, you know, I thought I still had a social life, you know, once a once very, very active and involved social life became kind of superficial, I guess I would say, mm-hmm. you know, it was limited to Facebook and, you know, saying hello in the car pickup line and, hey, we should get oh. together soon someday, but you never do. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> and, uh, you know didn't even really recognize um, what I had allowed to have happen until I was, uh, my children were in high school, Mm -hmm. and I had this aha revelation that life as I knew it was coming to an end, Um, (laughs) a a life that, you know, we prepared my children for and anticipated Mm -hmm. and got them all ready for, but I didn't get myself ready for this, and, Mm -hmm. you know, your question about what made me want to, to even become an indie author. I think I always thought I had a book in me. I had no idea it was going to be this one. <laughs> um, I, I just never knew what I would have to write about that would be interesting enough to put a, into an actual book and not like a pamphlet or a, <laughs> you know, type of thing. And right. yeah, so I, this, I was just really inspired by my own journey of basically losing myself to the point where I didn't want to get out of bed anymore because I didn't have anything to look forward to wow. beyond my family and to figuring it all out and coming back with strength and purpose be- all because of a tribe of support that I intentionally built for myself. Oh, wow. Okay. So you didn't have this like your whole life. It wasn't just like, this is just how I live. It- this came later. No, absolutely. I'm wow. in my fifties now. I I didn't even 
start even thinking about writing a book until I was 50. Wow. So it was, uh, it was kind of like, I mean, I was kind of um, inspired to write it. It came out through a process. I was invited to participate in the Mrs. Colorado America pageant. Wow. <laughs> when I was 50. And I was like, uh, heck no, that's not me. I'm not a pageant girl. I wouldn't know the first thing to do about that. But, you know, back in 2020, things were kind of drab and bleh, right? Yeah. And, and negative. And I thought, you know what? I, I kept on thinking about it. And I, and I just thought, you know what? We could all use a little more bling in our life right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, I'm going to bring the bling to my community. <laughs> I love it. Oh my so basically, I decided to hire a coach because I, like I said, never <laughs> done anything like this. And this is le legit, Brittany. I had to walk on heels in a bathing suit, in a bathing suit <laughs> on stage. On heels, I say, because I don't even wear heels. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear heels anymore. <laughs> No, it was terrifying, <laughs> but um, I got through it, but, I, but the, my coach kind of challenged me. She goes, well, what do you have to bring to the Mrs. America system? If you become Mrs. Colorado, what is it? What's your legacy? What do you have? And I thought about my journey and I thought about um, as I was talking to women and stuff, oh yeah, I feel the same way. I, you know, oh, this is hard. <laughs> Or, or, oh my gosh, I couldn't wait, wait for the kids to get out, right? Yeah. All kinds of different stories. But I thought, gosh, everybody feels like they're so alone. And like they're, we're doing this thing all by ourselves when really um, we're not alone. So I decided I really wanted to put my, um, write my story basically. But also it's not just, a, it's not, I call it a memoir slash self-help because I did a lot of research and a lot of uh, fact checking and to really determine what the issues socially we're facing are. And um, I mean, it's like seriously lots of, of um, facts and, and information, but then it, it intertwined is my own story and the, the stories of other women going through this life transition. Wow. <laughs> That's super poignant. That's so funny because I have a 16 year old daughter, my oldest, and I just had another baby that is eight months uh, today. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Congratulations. And wow. That's quite, quite the spread. Yeah, quite the spread. <laughs> but I'm noticing that with my daughter in high school, I'm like going, oh, wait a minute. Whoa. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Because I, I, when I realized what was happening, I started to like panic a little bit and kind of start creating moments <laughs> <laughs> and you know just figure out like oh my gosh how am I gonna keep what, what this wonderful little foursome that I have but still launch them and what, what, what who am I now I don't even know who I am anymore yeah <laughs> I understand that. Wow. Yeah. You're hitting a lot of, I think a lot of people are going to connect to this actually. Well, Lady and the Tribe, that's the name of your book. It sounds like a really inspiring and empowering book. I think is going to really hit a lot of people across the board. Um, can you share a little bit? Well, you just did share, you shared what motivated you to write it really. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm getting ahead of you. But, no. Um... Yeah, it, honestly, Brittany, when I started writing, I sat down and finished that thing in 10 weeks from front to, from, you know, beginning to end. Wow. And it just kind of, I felt like the information and the words were just coming through me to the page. It was, I was just completely, it was in complete inspired action. That's beautiful. That's absolutely the, beautiful. The, the editing process, however, <laughs> took a lot longer, <laughs> you know, I... I wanted to make sure it was like a, um, you know, I am an independent author, mm -hmm. self-published, I, but I wanted it to stack up against anything else out there in quality and in, in professionalism. So I hired all the best people to work with me to get it to market. Oh, that's awesome. I it was think... on my dime. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Okay. Um, well, can you discuss how you address the challenge of balancing giving to others while also prioritizing your own self-care and personal growth? 
Yeah, absolutely. So it got to a point that um, I think I, along with a lot of women, kind of have this mom guilt. And you're thinking, oh, if I do anything for myself and about myself, it's really just taking away from my kids and my family. But that is just couldn't be further from the truth. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we we need to be our whole selves to give from. If we, you know, you don't want to serve from a half pot of, of you know tea or whatever. Mm-hmm. You need to have that. You need to continually be put, investing in yourself, and that is um, time with friends, time on your own interests, time in any activities that you personally enjoy. And, and that includes money, too. You know, it isn't taking away from your family when you invest a little bit in yourself for things that are important to you. So, you know, basically, you know, you don't, you don't go away for two weeks or whatever and, and leave your family at home. You just, you need to, um, you know, put, blend it into your weekly schedule. And you need, But you need to kind of recognize what your needs are. Mm-hmm. And then you need to have a plan. And you need to put it on your calendar because things that are important in your life make your calendar. Mm-hmm. If it's if it's the yoga class that you've given up because because you're taking your kids to sports instead, <laughs> or if it's um, writing your your you know poems or your own book um, instead of getting your your kids to art class, you know you you just need to weave yourself into your life. I think we weeded ourselves out of our life mm. in, in many ways. So uh, just having a plan of action. And then once you've decided what you need to do and you put it on your calendar, protect that time. Because all too easy, someone will have another pr- priority that's, that's not yours, but it's, it requires your involvement. That, and we as women were like, oh, sure, I'll, I could do that mm-hmm. yoga class later. <laughs> or I, I'll get together with Jane in another you know another week or so right you know protect protect that time because just because it's there you know if they have a problem or something it doesn't have to be your problem of course you're going to help you just protect that time and that kind of trains your family that oh this time is sacred mm-hmm. so you know i better plan myself a little bit yeah wow well, your book emphasizes the importance of building a tribe of supportive women. Can you share some insights into what qualities make a tribe truly effective and uplifting? Absolutely. Well, that's going to absolutely depend on each individual and what your their, your needs are. Yes. Um, I, I think there's no certain number of people that you should have in your t- tribe. However, I do believe it needs to be more than one. <laughs> I love I love the idea of best friends. Yeah. And, and I love when I hear women say, my husband's my best friend. That is so awesome and wonderful. But that's a lot of pressure for one person. Yeah. Right, Brittany? Right. I mean, to be your everything, every need that you have, <laughs> this person has to, have, to fulfill. Right. Well, yeah. And that goes for a best friend friend too Mm -hmm. you know so Mm -hmm. i like i like to say have at least two and maybe five or six and each of these individuals will be bring something to into your life that you want to grow in experience more um you know maybe you you have a an older friend that can be your wise advisor you know when you have problems and someone you can really talk to and you really respect their opinion and they have your back and they're gonna you know give you some good advice um, maybe you have just um, a fangirl that just loves all your stuff and always shows up for you, right? Mm-hmm. That that person. And then you have your hiking or outdoor friend. Uh, my husband doesn't like to camp, so I like so I have a camping friend or a hiking friend that mm-hmm. that will go out and and fill that area of my life that I really just let go of for years and decided oh, I probably won't be doing that anymore because he doesn't like to do that. Mm. Well, why? Why? <laughs> so you so you pick fr- you find friends that support areas of your life that you want to continue to enjoy and grow in. And when I I also like to clarify that a tribe does not mean this pack of women that go bar hopping together and <laughs> are always together all the time, right? Uh-huh. You know, your your tribe is really unique to you. It's the, the, you know, three to five, six women. I like to, I, my, my tribes are called women. There's, there's definitely men that are important in everybody's life and, and all that. But, but for this, my purposes in the book, I think feminine friendship is powerful and important. Yes. Um, but each of these relationships are 
really uh, friendships. My, you know, I've got five very strong friendships, and they are my tribe. Do they get together sometimes? Well, yeah, if I put something together and invite them all together, they're here, and some of them are friends with each other, but they're not all friends with each other, and they don't all hang out separately from me. Right. So it's it's really all about you. <laughs> <laughs> Your tribe is all about you. I'm glad you said that. I was actually going to ask. I was going to say, so it doesn't always have to be your tribe is like a group of women that all go bar hopping together. It's who are you calling at different times or engaging in different activities that uplift your soul? Absolutely. You got it. You nailed it. Awesome. Um, So many of our listeners might be curious about the steps involved in nurturing and building their own tribe. Can you give some practical advice or strategies maybe from your book to help women establish these connections? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I know I, I know that um, we'll probably talk about the fact that some people are starting off and they have a, a tribe member. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they may not have anyone that's that deep because they're, they've gotten to that superficial point. Right. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start just by answering your question right now. Like, okay, let's say you have a couple people that you are connected with. You have a pretty strong friendship. You would like to grow into a tribal relationship, meaning you're going to grow in depth and vulnerability over time. Mm-hmm. And the important thing, that, you know, the friendship formula just requires your time, your attention, and your enthusiasm. So, you know, time is something that's a really limited resource for us. So, again, there comes in the planning to set aside time for each of these friendships. And I I recommend having a face-to-face, you know, coffee, lunch, whatever that looks like for you, shopping. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do it once a month with your your best girlfriends. Okay. And this is a one-on-one thing. And so with each of my tribe members, I try to see them in person once a month so we can catch up I can learn about what's going on with her she can learn about what's going on with me so we are truly living our life together they, we're, we're in each other's lives and I, we know each other's lives that's the problem with social media is that everybody's posting all their positive stuff their vacations their new cars the sports whatever mm-hmm. but nobody knows the hard stuff and yeah. because we're not bragging about it right <laughs> but we all have it right and and you need someone to be able to have these conversations with that kind of get you and, you know, and you can, you know, have a soft place and a safe place to share. Mm. So there's the first thing is just to monthly get together. Uh, then I like to put together a monthly standing. We have a, a happy hour we call it women who wine once a month, you know, mm-hmm. and but it could be tea, it could be shopping, it could be just uh, hiking, whatever you and your friends like to do, and it's just really a standing third Thursday of the month for for my group, and it's going to be a five thirty to seven thirty window. Come, you know, bring uh, your own glass, <laughs> bring an appetizer or a bottle of wine to share, and we're just going to stand around and catch up and visit as a group. As nice. you know, and people come in and out. It's kind of open house style. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have to come. Um, you don't come to all of them. Probably you just come when you can. And then our extended tribe comes. You know, my tribes, tribes yeah. come together too, and I learn about my kindred clan, and that's what I call them. That are my extensions of my tribe. Aww. Those friendships. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, th- I and I think beyond that, you know, just you know, on a weekly basis, this is when you use texting, and this is when you use Facebook to just say, "Hey, thinking of you," or or sending a funny meme, and just kind of being in in each other's daily routine in some way to connect on a regular basis and again i'm not saying every day but because that's not what our lives are or what our lives are busy but you know just making a concerted effort on a weekly basis to connect to, to your tribe yeah i think that's a great idea we were talking before about transition moments and you know we all go through them and they can be pretty challenging how does Lady in the Tribe guide women through these types of moments, providing them with tools and perspectives to navigate the big changes in growth? Well, it's, it's all about um, building these foundational relationships that can, you know, lift when things are going great and hold us high and cheer us on, but also catch us in these tough mm-hmm. moments. Yeah. And because we have had these conversations and we know each other's lives, when something 
transitional or tragic or anything happens, I'm going to go to my tribe, at least someone in my tribe, and, and be able to uh, share and talk and get advice and work through it together and not feel so alone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Brenda, your mission is to help women discover their passions and purpose through connection. Can you share a story or example of how someone's life was transformed by embracing this approach? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I work with women who have kind of lost themselves in their roles Mm -hmm. as wife, mother, professional, whatever it may be, because I'm telling you what those career women can do the same thing Mm -hmm. without any any children. They dive all in and uh, to the exclusion of all their own stuff. So um, Jody comes to mind. And uh, she was, uh, she had children in middle school that had just transitioned or transferred, uh, grown into the high school, I should say. And she was realizing that all these um, other moms that she'd been hanging out with for, you know, since kin- kindergarten, basically, you know how you, you get in there and you're doing the, yes. <laughs> um, all the sports and you're like helping on recess and maybe helping in the class. And, and really, you know, for years, you're like with this group of, of women and other parents. Mm-hmm. And she felt like she had really built some significant connections. But when they all went their separate ways to different schools, all of a sudden it was like crickets. Oh. With with the, with these friendships that she thought she had right. really, that she was counting on, and you know, it, it, there's different kinds of friendships, and I'll, I'll just touch on the on the this one that we had that I had to help her and work her through is that we have um, a group of friendships called what I call the friendlies, the friendlies, because you're friendly with them, and you know you they are a friend of convenience yes and it's about because you're at the same place maybe it's a it's a work friend relationship or this, in this case the middle school mom uh you know, you actually feel you know, they're great to talk to you enjoy time together you sit next to them on the bleachers for years and you tra- sometimes even travel together mm-hmm. um and but then she just was like oh my gosh i have no friends now all of a sudden and we talked about you know th- this friendship of convenience and what it's what it really did for her and for them mm-hmm. it was you know a means to an end not that the, the, that the relationships weren't real but that she hadn't done any work to bring those friendships outside of those classroom and playground and sports situations right. they had they had nothing else but that Mm -hmm. and so when their their lives went off in different directions you know they just followed along and it wasn't like they're mean girls or like anything rough was going on it just wasn't wasn't the friendship they had she hadn't built that kind of friendship yet it was it was kind of still at the superficial Mm -hmm. and convenience level Mm -hmm. so i put some strategies in place on how to go into that next chapter of high school um, which is a little harder because the kids need you less when they start driving for some <laughs> reason um, but so there you just have to take a little bit more action so we I helped her get into a rhythm of putting some social engagements um, friend finding on her um, in her calendar each week and what we did was we started to I asked her what things did you used to do that you don't do anymore mm. you know that, what did you give up along the way and for her, it was uh, it was like art. You know, she hadn't done that for a long, long time. So we found a, few, a meetup, and we found a um, local thing at the YMCA that she could kind of tap into and and start showing up. You know, these types of activities are great place breeding grounds for friendship because you you already have something in common, right? Right. You're gonna you, you enjoy doing something that's the same, and then giving her some tips and strategies on how to start the conversation and have it not be weird, and how to uh, take it to the you know next level without it being weird. Everybody's so worried about being weird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, but the thing is, everybody feels weird. It's true. So, yeah, so it's just not, you be the hero, I say. Be the hero and just make the, ask the, the first invitation. Yeah, just put yourself out there. Just be, yeah, I, I taught my kids, actually. They, they like to be called weird. They're like, thank you, I am weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I love that those kids are so strong like that. They're amazing. Kids are so much fun. 
Well, your book also offers guidance for those who already have a tribe. Can you elaborate on ways to strengthen those bonds within the existing tribe and fostering deeper connections? Oh, sure. Well, and I'm sorry, I kind of answered that before as far as like, like getting that monthly. Doing uh, the monthly thing, yeah. Going. Yeah. And then with my tribe, like my five or six plus a few, usually we end up being around 10. I plan an annual women's retreat. Um, we call it, we call it GNO girls night out. Oh, nice. And we, uh, rent a place in the mountains for us. Cause I'm here in Colorado. So somewhere that's like an hour or two away because you want it close enough that it's not too, you know, hard on the family or hard to get away, but far enough away <laughs> that you have a change of scenery, right? Yes. And they can't call you. I was going to say, they can't call you right away. <laughs> so uh, I, we rent like what I call a mansion, just Ooh. a VRBO or Airbnb. Yeah. Uh, something really nice. Everybody has a bed. And we, you know, each, we divide up the responsibilities. We each cook a meal and serve it to the, to the women. And we, most of the time though, you're served and just, we, we do some like circle time and sharing and uh, just some bond, some bonding exercises, maybe something a little scary or daring just to, to uh, bond us further and go, Ooh, we did that, you know, memory making stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, it just kind of escape from your regular uh, routine and, build those connections in a faster, more furious way. And then when you come back, you're all refreshed and you're all filled up and you're all energized and you are a better mom and spouse and employee or whatever (laughs) you're professional than you were when you left. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, you are so engaging. You have such charisma. I, I'm, I love talking to you. Being part of your circle would sounds great. How can other people get involved with you and benefit from your resources, events, and coaching? Okay. Well, thank you for asking, Brittany. I appreciate that. So um, the best point of contact is just my website, brendaridgely.com. That's B-R-E-N-D-A. R-I-D-G-L-E-Y dot com. And there you'll find um, the different events I have going on. Um, I have a twice a year women's re- retreat called the Whole You Retreat, where we get you up at, to Breckenridge. And I have women coming from all over the country to this event. It's three nights, four days. In, and I'm serious, this is a mansion. This is a 32-bed home oh. surrounded by national forests. And we deep dive into some personal growth to get Mm. you back on track to what you've lost and to to get you excited about the next part of your life. Um, Of course, there's massage and there's all kinds. There's a, you know, Roman hot hot tub. It's just an amazing, nurturing, powerful feminine energy weekend. So that's coming up here in November um, and then in May again. But I have regular uh, online um, web workshops and I have a group that meets once a month called the discovery tribe and together we work on a different personal growth uh, topic each month and then we make connections with each other it's, I make these groups kind of small between eight and ten so they really build some relationships a, uh, a, a tribe of sorts mm-hmm. you know that they can lean on for future and then I have my um, tribal, living tribal programs, everything, anything from a 90-day um, program up to six months and beyond. It just depends on people's individual needs, and that can all be found on my website. Awesome. Okay, and we will also have all of that linked on your profile on Zarlaquan as well. Oh, thank you. Um, personal growth and connection are always ongoing journeys. How do you continue to learn and evolve? You know, I am reading something all the time or researching online. I really, truly want to know the the answers and learn so much more. Um, So I am continually looking into anything um, about uh, relationships. Loneliness Mm -hmm. is a huge epidemic in our country today. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just connection and going deep and what's preventing women in particular from, you know, having those deeper relationships and conversations and and we all know you know things can happen that uh that kind of scare us and and hurt our feelings and it comes and makes Mm -hmm. us back off so what are some strategies so i'm always looking for uh this this kind of personal growth for myself 
so that I can, you know, practice it and then pass it on and and help others with it. Mm-hmm. So what takeaway would you like people to take today from this podcast? Well, um, for the aspiring authors out there, I would say, you know, it seems like every, a lot of people I talk to say, oh, I want to write a book someday, and someday is not a day of the week. <laughs> create a small goal you know maybe it's 200 words a day or you know 500 words a day or something like that or 500 words every couple days just to start moving you in the direction of that dream of yours because time goes so fast and before you little increments of adding before you know it you'll have 10,000 you know words and you'll have you know something that's really exciting and that that's pulling you to write me write me write me <laughs> but you got to get started so and it's sometimes it's, it's hard to start so find something that you're that you're excited about a piece of it doesn't have to be the beginning maybe it's a, the middle part of your book and start just writing well brenda speaking of that what is next on your writing journey are there any new exciting projects or ideas that you are exploring right now Oh, yes, I sure am, uh, Brittany. I am writing my second book. It's called oh. And She Yeah, it's called <laughs> And She Lives. Oh. And She Lives. And it's, the, the tagline is Ignite Your Life's Purpose and mm. Save the World. Mm, I love it. Because guess what? <laughs> uh, you know, the Dalai Lama said it best. The Western woman will save the world. It's because we have the wisdom, the resources, the knowledge, the empathy you know we have so much powerful information and our hearts are so big that we can if we put our minds to any problem we can solve it but we need to first get ourselves right and that's why the Mm -hmm. ignite your life's purpose is to get ourselves back into a position of feeling whole again so that we can make the impact on the world that we want and probably save the world because I truly believe each of us have our own way that we are bringing value to this world and a reason we're here maybe you know what it is maybe you don't and if you you don't that's okay a lot of people don't but you that's when you need to start doing that introspective work to figure out what it is so you can bring it out and then from that platform of strength find out what makes what matters to you and make a difference wow Man, I really appreciate this talk. I think you've inspired a lot of people. I'm inspired. And I'm kind of excited. I, I don't know where is your book on pre-order? No, not yet. I'm I'm just about halfway through it. I'm okay. hoping by oh gosh, by the end of the year I will have it done. I'm not sh- beyond that. We'll see. The editing process, I never know what to what. Uh, you know, this is a this is a little takeaway too for the authors. Um, my book the first book I wrote is absolutely 100% intact from when I, I, I sent it to the editors, but they like to like rearrange it a little <laughs> bit, rearrange your chapters and have you clarify things. So that process takes quite a bit of time and it just really made it better. It did, but, but uh, it's, it's an exciting process. Awesome. Oh man. Well, whenever your new book comes out, let us know and we'll uh, post that on Zarlaquan as well. And I really appreciate awesome. you. Um, coming maybe when you write the new one you'll, you can come back and we can talk about that too i would love to Brittany. thank you so much for this opportunity what a great uh, podcast this is a great service and i appreciate it thank you so much our guest today kevin dunlap is the author of the compelling book launch the a to z of creating a successful business 
Kevin's entrepreneurial journey is nothing short of inspiring. Having successfully launched and managed multiple businesses throughout his career, he's the kind of person who has turned his entrepreneur dreams into reality. And he's here today to share his insights and wisdom with all of us. Join us now. Today, we have a special treat in store for you. Joining us today is Kevin A. Dunlap, a serial entrepreneur, educator, and visionary behind the Optimal Performance Academy. In our conversation, we'll explore the Optimal Performance Academy, how they're revolutionizing the way entrepreneurs learn and grow with its innovative online education programs, workshops, and coaching. Let's tap into Kevin's insights right now on the Xyloquan podcast. Hello, Kevin. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, can you share a little bit about your journey from being downsized to becoming an entre- a serial entrepreneur? Uh, sure. Uh, back uh, quite a few years ago, I was a computer programmer working full-time for Corporate America. And I, I was working on a project known as Y2K. Some of, y'all, some of your listeners may remember that. And after coming back from vacation, I, w- I was downsized. And and not the most uh, a pleasant way. And th- at that time, I swore I would never work full time for corporate America again. And that actually began my first uh, business, which I was working uh, with a network marketing company doing sales. Um, that company shut down a few months after I joined, and then that led me on a journey to trying to figure out you know what is it that uh, that I wanted to do. I eventually uh, ended up so I starting investing in real estate, and then a couple of years. From uh, coastal North Carolina to Las Vegas, Nevada, where I started a real estate consultation business, and I ran that for uh, more than uh, eight years until I got my license as a real estate agent, and I did that for an, an additional eight years. So that was sixteen years of running my own business and you know doing the whole uh, real estate thing. In two thousand and twenty, just to be uh, just. To sum this up really quickly, I wrote my fourth book. Uh, it was called Launch the A to Z in Creating a Successful Business. And in 2022, after some uh, personal things that happened uh, in my life, I decided to move to Raleigh, North Carolina. And that's when I actually launched Optimal Performance Academy. And that school, that is an academy or a school for entrepreneurs where we have online courses, we have workshops, we have uh, a tra- a training events, we have a group coaching and, and consultation. And what I was wanting to do is I, I see so many people that are just starting out or or who are new to entrepreneurship, including, let's say, real estate agents, that they just don't know what they don't know. And they struggle a, a, a lot at the very beginning. And unfortunately, a, a, a good number of them go out of business within that first one or two years. My goal at the academy is actually to educate entrepreneurs so they can actually be more effective in growing their businesses. Oh, excellent. Can you tell us more about the classroom and the recorded courses from your meetup group? Uh, Yes, I do have a meetup group. Uh, It's called Small Business Owners uh, or meetup.com small-business-owners. And what I do there is I have a free training. It happens on Tuesdays at three o'clock. And that that's three o'clock Eastern, and it'll be noon uh, Pacific. And we, we go over a particular topic, a, a particular subject. Uh, I do record all those uh, recordings, and then I put them into our membership site, which is what I call the classroom. So if you attended the event, you can go back and re-listen to it if you want to get uh, a, a, an education. Or if you missed uh, some events, you can go and listen to the ones that you either missed in the, uh, in the past or, or possibly you know later on down, down the road into the future. Let's say um, you, you become a member and, and then uh, there's an event coming up next week, but you can't make it. You can always go to the classroom usually within 24 hours after the event occurred and and a replay of the event is going to be in there. Excellent. Your goal is to help uh, 1,000 small businesses achieve a six-figure annual income. What are some key strategies or insights you often share to guide businesses towards reaching this milestone? Well, it's actually being more effective in your business, which usually involves uh, pushing people's uh, comfort zone. Um, one of the things I, I often talk about, the one thing that that changed my business back in 2009 is when I started shooting video, a video of my houses. 
And I have a talk that's called Your Face is Your Brand. And the thing is, but many people need to get out there, you know, start shooting video, uh, start uh, start being on stage and start uh, uh, pushing the envelope so that they can get their name out there. And therefore, by being out there and being exposed to more people, they can attract more business uh, to them. Wow. <laughs> With your diverse background, including teaching, programming, real estate, and even being a stuntman, how do you leverage these experiences to provide a holistic approach to business and coaching and education? One of the thing is, uh, all the stuff that I've done together, uh, in including serving five years in, in the Navy, being stationed overseas for four of those years, which <laughs> therefore that brings in some cultural um, uh, trainings that I learned when I was young. Um, it's, I mean, I just incorporate all the different things that I've learned uh, uh, over the years, and then, and I draw a little bit from each one, and I feel everybody can do that, no matter how many jobs that you have, is that most people have had experiences that they can draw upon, that they can actually uh, capitalize on. For an example, when I was doing stunt work, and I was working on a, a few independent films, I, I learned uh, a concept, I learned this on my own, this wasn't something that somebody taught me. Uh, well, and it was that um, when a stunt man or stunt woman, for that matter, uh, becomes fearless, they become dangerous. So what I've learned is like if you if you're about to say jump out of a four story window and you're gonna land in an airbag or or cardboard uh, boxes, uh, and you're afraid to do that. However, if your key to to go is when the uh, the director says action, you've got to go, uh, regardless of, of that fear. And the thing is. When you're in life in general, it's not about uh, it's not about overcoming that fear in order to do something in your life or to do something new. It's about controlling that fear and then acting in spite of that fear. Those are some of the things I learned. That was just one uh, one example that I learned from doing stunts that I can apply to business. And that's valuable because courage is feeling the fear but doing it anyways. <laughs> that's an excellent takeaway. Yeah. And thank you yes. for your service. Oh, my pleasure. Um, you've authored multiple books, including Launch, the A to Z in Creating a Successful Business. Um, can you share a valuable tip or principle from that book that entrepreneurs might find particularly impactful? Well, it is. I mean, and I'll go to that early on because these are the, that book is, is about the logistical steps that you need to go through. One of the things that I talk a lot about, and I even talk about it in my second book, uh, is about reverse engineering. So you start with the end in mind and then build backwards to where you uh, to the point where you are today. So if, if your goal is to be, hey, I want to be a, a six figure uh, wage earner. Okay, so what do I need to be doing to making, say, uh, about $8,000 a month? Okay, so if I'm making 8000 a month, what, what is it that you need to be doing? Or eight to nine thousand a month. What, what is that you need to be doing? Mm -hmm. If you've got a course that, for an example, that you sell for three thousand dollars, then that means you need to make three sales a month. So, what is it that you need to do to get in front of those three uh, those three people or the, the those three people that are going to be buying from you? If you've got to say a twenty percent closing ratio, that means you need to be uh, 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 five you know, in front of five times that many people. So, if you if you close at twenty percent and you need to get three, that means you need to be in front of fifteen people or or may having fifteen appointments. And then you, you just keep reverse engineering to to the smaller and smaller steps. Nice. Okay. Uh, can you share a success story of a small business owner who has benefited from the Optimal Performance Academy? Uh, sure. I, uh, I had a client, uh, I'm not going to mention her name, and she wanted to start a uh, a business uh, to do uh, Asian weddings. And and then the first thing I was talking to her was like, when you say Asian weddings, what do you mean? And what she ended up meaning, because the first thing I said, so you want to help people uh, you know, in, in kimonos in, in, in Japan, or are you looking for Chinese? And what she ended up being talking about was I, what she wants to do uh, South Asian weddings or, or for Indian weddings. So it was then, okay, now that we've got your business model uh, of what you want to do, you've got more clarity around what it's going to be doing. Let's go ahead and, and create those steps that you need to uh, get to that uh, that point where you need to, where you need or want uh, to be. So what you do is you take the end goal and you work your way backwards. How do we get there? That is, that's, that is the first step. Yes. Okay. Awesome. What is your vision for the future of OPA? And are there any exciting new developments coming up or upcoming projects you'd like to give us a sneak peek of? 
Uh, well, some uh, we are starting to do some uh, workshops, some uh, one day workshops later in the year, or I'm not exactly sure when you're you're listening to be listening to this, but later in the, in this year we are going to uh, start doing a three day master class, and depending on how those go, then we will reoffer those into the future as well. As far as as far as what OPA or the academy does, right now we are in the process of creating uh, more online courses. And at the moment, at the at this moment in time, we have seven different tracks that we, that, that we're building on. And just like any other school, we want to start creating more and more uh, uh, courses. Eventually, we may uh, bring on other uh, other uh, instructors outside myself, other professionals, where we could probably do some kind of uh, profit sharing uh, on the sale of the course, where uh, we could start bringing in other uh, uh, other. Uh, courses uh, for people to take so that when an entrepreneur comes to us let's say a year or two from now they have a full track of different things that they could they could be doing that's that's pertinent to their uh, specific business and their own business goals wonderful um on zarlaquan.com we will have your profile with all your links on there available so everyone can find you um is there anything else you'd like to add um i would just say if you there is no if you if you're still working a corporate job and, and you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, I would say go ahead and 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 make the decision and get started, or at least start doing the research uh, to get started. You, and it's not all uh, black and white. Uh, when, when you're not, when you're an entrepreneur, it's a lot of gray, which basically means it doesn't mean like, hey, I'm thinking about starting my own business. It does not mean you have to quit your job. You can do both at the same time. A lot of times people call that a side hustle and you just work that side hustle. You work on the evenings, you work on your days off, you work it on the weekends and and, and start building that. And then what's your side hustle, um, the income uh, equals to what, what you're making in your business. Then you can make the the decision if you want to stay, if you want to go, if you want to cut back and just work uh, you know, a limited number of hours. It is never going to be a black and white. It's always going to be a whole lot of gray. Mm -hmm. That is fairly valuable. Thank you so much for being here today, Kevin, and sharing your valuable oh. insights and experience. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being part of the Zarlaquan podcast. If you enjoy this episode, please like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you never miss an update. <laughs>